Hi, Denise Gwen, reading aloud for you for my short story, A Good Christian Woman, Chapter 19. Had I given myself away? I hadn't come right out and said, Mrs. McClintock, that's not how my mamma told me it went down. But it felt as if I'd done exactly that. How dare Mamma lie to me? And how dare Mrs. McClintock leave her boy unattended for even one second? Mamma, why'd you lie to me? You stole a baby. What did I do with this kind of knowledge? Did anything need to be done? And yet somehow I sensed Mrs. McClintock knew. For once, the weather newscasters were right. Despite it being March, a heavy snow was falling as I fled the cancer treatment center. The malevolent gray sky had opened up and released heavy clouds of snow that drifted to the ground and blanketed the world. They said to expect seven inches. I drove to a coffee shop and ordered hot cocoa and went to sit down by a window and recollect my thoughts. Ben called me. Hey, babe, he said, speaking in his usual easygoing tone. How you doing? Ben, something awful has happened. His voice changed instantly. What's going on? Are you all right? Did you get hurt? I, 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 I'm fine, honey, but I've made a mistake. What'd you do, Marianne? What did you do? I told Mrs. McClintock. Oh, dear God, Marianne. I didn't really tell her, I corrected. But we were talking, and she started talking about her little boy. And then she started telling her story, her version of the story. And Ben, it's completely different from what my mama told me. Hold on, Marianne, honey. Hold on. Calm down, baby. Calm down. Ben, I'm so scared. Marianne, is Mrs. McClintock there with you? Is she listening to you? I wanted to laugh. I wanted to ask him, how stupid do you think I am? Then thought better of it. I was pretty stupid. I was pretty freaking stupid right now, but I wasn't that stupid. No, she's at the cancer center. Where are you? I'm at the coffee shop. Oh, so you're not near her anywhere right now? No, but Ben, honey, I need to go back and pick her up. Why do you need to pick her up? Oh, Ben can be so stupid sometimes. I told him I was going to take her to her chemotherapy appointment. In all the stress and excitement over finals, he must have forgotten. But really, I did tell him. I offered to take her to her treatment today for old time's sake, you know. No, I don't know, he said coldly. I don't know why anybody in their right mind would volunteer to haul some old bitch to a chemotherapy appointment, but that's beside the point. Yes, Ben, I said tersely, it's entirely beside the point. A heavy silence on the other end of the line. Okay, Ben said slowly. Now tell me exactly how McClintock told you how it went down. I told him. But as I told him, I realized before he even told me that I hadn't given anything away. After another long silence, he spoke. Well, that does kind of jive with your mamma story, he said. Do you really think so? I wanted to believe him. I needed to believe him. Well, Mrs. McClintock might believe that her little boy knew not to wander down to the stream in back of their house. But what five-year-old doesn't go wandering off? This did make me smile. I wouldn't know, being as I've never been a five-year-old boy. Well, I was a five-year-old boy, and if my mother told me not to do something... I'd be just as sure to go and do the opposite. I mulled on this. Think about it, Ben said. It makes perfect sense. 
she walks into the house and I'd be willing to bet you she was gone for more than a few seconds. I'd bet you dollars to donuts she was gone for 10, 15 minutes. That's plenty of time for a curious little guy to wander down the hill to the stream in back of his house. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. He certainly lifted my spirits. He could have walked along the stream bank all the way to the mouth of the river where your grandma and her friends were dancing. And he saw them dancing and he thought it was funny. And well, the little guy just fell in. A long pause. It's still Mrs. McClintock's fault for leaving her son alone. Ben, she was in her backyard watching her little boy. So, I would have made my kid walk into the house with me. Oh, Ben, I said, tears creeping down my cheeks. You're cheering me up. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to cheer you up. Look, McClintock's an old biddy who's dying, and she's trying to figure out a way to take the blame off herself for her son's death. But the bottom line is, it's still her fault. He was so sure of himself, it galvanized me. Waves of gratitude washed over me. The dumb bitch brought it on herself, he said finally. My pager beeped. Oops, it's time for me to pick her up. Okay. Ben? Yes? Are you sure? A long silence, then he spoke. I'm sure your mama was loaded up on LSD and whatever else she and her friends could get their hands on, but they had no idea they'd been followed, and when she saw him... She tried to save him. That's right. Okay. Go pick up the old biddy, run her home, and then head over to your mamas, okay? I'm on my way. I'm jumping in the car right now. Okay. We exchanged our I love yous, and I clicked off. Held the phone in my hand for a long moment. Time to pick up Mrs. McClintock.